I would say the inaccuracies of that is everyone knows all the players now, as Sean alluded to, with, with video. And you follow the right people on Twitter, you'll mm-hmm. know about everyone. Mm-hmm. So our job is not beating the bushes, finding some guy in a playground in Spain, like the movie. It, it's really just de- choosing between the list that everyone has. Now, it's not going to be the same as the ones you find online, but most teams are going to have. Right, like Giannis was probably the most undiscovered because he had citizenship issues that prevented him from playing on the on the junior national teams and stuff all growing up but usually the the if if you're not in the top 12 18 year olds in Spain or in Lithuania or something you're you're probably not on NBA radar right the the depth is not so great that you you're not going to you know be on those teams so How much has that changed though like since you've been in this landscape and really since your dad got here back in the early 2000s because at that time there wasn't all this film available no, it, literally it, everyone and anyone it's changed a lot i mean we were we were asking we were calling teams you know begging them to fedex dvds across <laughs> the country you're right you're right you know and now i can literally pull up any game in the world on my laptop so it, it, it has changed quite a bit but but that has made the world smaller it is easier it's harder to find diamonds in the rough in re- remote places um, but the late night fast food in the hotel room is accurate. I do <laughs> that way too often. That's how much has the G League changed maybe a diamond in the rough becoming more of a diamond that you would not have become one without it? it you know, I would say that even more than the G or, or even more than the G League expanding is the economic crisis. It, it, the European basketball hasn't recovered since 2008, 2009, mm. Spain, Greece, Italy, the, the the salaries for players over there has greatly reduced, and that has pushed a lot more players to the G League. They still could make a little more money in Europe often, but the chance at a call-up, it, it, the, the gap isn't so big. The guaranteed money they're turning down isn't so big. So that, as much as anything, has pushed the G League deeper and deeper, and then two-way contracts made it even more. Mm-hmm. And and so that, that has made... Um, a little easier sometimes scouting. There's more players that are around uh, U.S. That, that we can go see. I know you had to have watched it. I watched it. Probably most of our listeners have watched it. How embellished is that movie about like what the real scenarios are overseas with, with going and trying to find talent? So I got so many messages about that movie. I got so many, so many friends that I haven't Adam heard Sandler from was in playing you in that movie, right? Yeah, but but I have to say, I have to say that first of all, my my dream is to be in a movie too at some point. That's, okay. I just want to throw it out there. We'll make that's that one happen. Of my, that's one. That's one of my of my uh, lifetime achievement goals. <laughs> but uh, the movie is a little bit of a mix of what it is to be like to be an agent and a scout because normally you can't mentor a, pro- a prospect. You yeah, know, you can't be that close to a prospect. You have you're observing him. You're you're working for somebody that you are not able, not allowed to represent. And he was representing him in 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 certain ways. So that's a, there's a little bit of a tweak. But I like the fact that he was. What made it close to my story is that he was also an assistant coach, a go-to scout, that mm-hmm. was an assistant coach again. And that's where people that were texting me that reminded them of me because I was shifting. I'm shifting back and forth between those roles with the national team and the Celtics. So. There's a little bit of both in there, and it, but the story itself is not necessarily all about the scout. Well, Bettis, if you wind up finding us that diamond in the rough that winds up becoming the best player ever in the NBA, something tells me that you will get that movie about yourself. <laughs> and maybe you'll be able to play yourself in the movie. I prefer not to play myself. I prefer to be a, a, a crazy Jim Carrey impersonator or something <laughs> like that. Who would play you then? Uh, uh, I don't, I don't, I don't need a story. I, my story is already uh, uh, well, just legendary. It doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't need to be emphasized. The people, people know. I, I'll, I want to shoot a movie where I would, I'm a, a Jim Carrey type of character, and I just can act a little bit crazy here and there.